we're going to derive the arc length formula. Let f of x be a differentiable function defined over the interval x greater or equal to a and less than or equal to b. Then arc length l is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. Now before we derive this formula, let's review the mean value theorem. We'll abbreviate it by MVT. And mean value theorem says the following. Suppose we have a function that is differentiable that is defined over the interval. Let's call the left endpoint of the interval xi minus 1 and let's call the right endpoint of the interval xi. So this function is differentiable over this interval. Then it may look something like this. So this point here is f of xi minus 1 and the y value right up here is f of x sub i. So let's call this point xi minus 1 comma f of x sub i minus 1 and this point has coordinates xi comma f of xi. Now let's draw a line segment or a line through these two points that's called a secant line and we know that the slope of the secant line so let's call it m of secant is equal to change in y over change in x that's f of xi minus f of xi minus 1 divided by xi minus xi minus 1. Here's what mean value theorem says. When we look at the graph we see a point right here at least one there's going to be at least one point where the tangent line to the graph at that point is parallel to the secant line. Now the slope of the tangent line is the derivative evaluated at the x-coordinate of the point. So let's call the point here because it's in this interval let's call it x i star. According to mean value theorem there is at least there is at least one point x i star, at least one value of x, x i star, with a property that x i star is greater than x i minus 1, greater than the left end point, and less than the right end point, which is x i, such that, you can see from the picture, the slope of the tangent line that's f prime of x i star is equal to the slope of the secant line which is f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 divided by x i minus x i minus 1. Usually we write it in this way f prime of x i star times x i minus x i minus 1, that's equal to f of xi minus f of xi minus 1. So that's the mean value theorem. We're going to need this result shortly. Let's now go to the derivation of the arc length formula. So here is the graph of our function over the interval a to b. So this is a and make this b over here. And this graph goes something like this. It doesn't matter how we draw it as long as it's nice and smooth. And now let's start by subdividing the interval from A to B into N subintervals. We're going to call A X sub 0 and then X1 here. This is X2 and so on. And let's call this point here XI minus 1 and uh, let's call this one x sub i and so on. This would be xn minus 1 and b will be xn. So what we're going to do is look at this uh, subinterval from xi minus 1 to xi. This is the i subinterval. We take the y coordinate here and then we take the, I co 
the y coordinate right here and let's say this is the actual length of the curve over this interval and let's call the actual length L sub i and we're going to approximate that uh, actual length by the secant line by this line segment that goes through the point x i minus 1 f of x i minus 1 and up here x i f of x i so the length the actual length over the i sub interval l sub i is approximately the length of this line segment which using the distance formula is equal to change in x which is x i minus x i minus 1 squared plus change in y f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 also squared. So now is where we're going to use the uh, mean value theorem. By mean value theorem we know that there is an x i star between x i minus 1 and x i such that f of x i minus f of x i minus 1 is equal to f prime of x i star times x i minus x i minus 1. So let's plug it in. L sub i, the actual length, is approximately the square root x i minus x i minus 1 squared plus f prime of x i star squared times x i minus x i minus 1 squared. And then you can see when we write it in this way, we can factor x i minus x i minus 1. So this is square root of x i minus x i minus 1 squared times 1 plus f prime of x i star squared. And this is equal to square root of a square will just give us x i minus x i minus 1 so it's square root of 1 plus f prime of x i star squared times x i minus x i minus 1. Now we're going to call this delta x i. If all the sub intervals that we take are the same this delta x i will just be called that common length of each subinterval delta x. So now we're, we're ready to finish this up. The actual length of the curve is equal to the sum L1 plus L2 plus L i plus all the way up to L sub n, which we can write as a summation i equals 1 to n L sub i. And this is approximately equal to the length of the line segments that approximate each uh, length over each subinterval. So this is the summation i equals 1 to n of square root 1 plus f prime of x i star squared times delta x i or delta x. So now the actual length is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity, that is, as we, as we take more and more uh, subintervals, as we make them finer and finer, so that the line segments will really start to get closer and closer to the actual length. So this is the summation of i equals 1 to n of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x i star squared times delta x, and you recognize this as a Riemann sum, this limit is equal to, by fundamental theorem of calculus, this limit is equal to the summation from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared, this definite integral dx. And that's why this formula is true by using approximation of actual length over each subintervals by line segments. For more videos, visit www.mathprep.com.
videos.com.